Welcome everyone uh, to our special uh, live stream every Sunday here at in Cyprus. Today we're having a beautiful sunny day here in Cyprus. I hope everyone is having a good Father's Day. Oh, happy Father's Day to you. Thank you. <laughs> happy Father's Day to everyone uh, out there. Uh, I hope they enjoy their uh, their lives with their children. Um, let's see here. Hello to Ernest. Hello to Nico. Hello to everyone. Yeah, happy Father's Day. If there is, uh, let's see. Good to be here. Good to have you. Hello, guys. Evgenios. Okay. Hello, Sir Steve. Happy Father's Day, Steve. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's wait for everyone to come in. Uh, I know it's a Sunday. It's a relaxed day for everyone here in Cyprus. Everyone is at the beach, I suppose, except for the people that they are working. Uh, so I hope everyone is having a good day. Uh, we're going to have some interesting topics today with everyone. Today is going to be a little bit different because we want to invite a guest uh, to join us for the full show so they can comment on every topic. It's going to be like one to two minutes uh, opinion on, on every topic and we're going to change uh, guests so everyone can play with it. So write your, uh, your TFA uh, username. So we can send you the, the link uh, once we pick you out. And uh, make sure you have a good connection with the internet so everything runs smoothly. Uh, let's see. Okay. Hello, Crypto Chat. Stranger. The water is so cold, so I suppose you're at the beach. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hakan. Okay, we got some usernames. We're going to wait a little bit so everyone can write their username. Uh, happy Father's Day, Steve. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Who, whoever wants to join the live stream today. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll bring them in as at the end of uh, each uh, small segment. Yeah. We'll bring you in. So <clears throat> we're going to start your... it up. Keep your usernames in there, and we'll send you out Uh a link to the few people to give your comments as well on the topics that we talk about. Um, and uh, let's uh, let's start with uh, we got a good crowd now, so let's start with uh, what's happening on uh, total market cap. Yeah. And uh, so uh, last week, as uh, whoever watched the live stream, Steve predicted that it's going to be down a little bit down week. So, like Steve said, we're down around. 150 billion something like that <laughs> so small change yeah bitcoin small change for this industry bitcoin was uh mm. like 5 minutes ago 30 almost 33 33000 mm. yeah. now it's 34 $2000 ethereum that's huge uh we have binance going down cardano dogecoin is up there so the top 10 is barely the same no not because every coin went down so, like we said, you cannot have only good news. And I think we played, like you said, every single card that we had up, yeah. up, up, up <clears throat> until now. Yeah, it was, it was a major, you know, we had the major wipeout mm. from 2.6 trillion down to 1.5. Yeah. And, and that was brutal. <laughs> and uh, then we had a little positive surge, and we talked about that. But all, after you have your positive surge, of course, the, it's going to wash back a little bit. And we had, we had a bit of a weak uh, week. And um, I think one of the, you know, Bitcoin, yet yeah, now it's at 33 again. So Bitcoin's yeah. 33,000. And, uh, you know, that's kind of, you know, 62, everybody remembers about two months ago now. Let's let's talk a little bit about um, price versus value. Mm -hmm. Now, um, <clears throat> even watching some of these traditional investors like um, Warren Buffett, who I'm not a big fan of Warren Buffett at okay. all, but you know the, he does have a few really profound insights and very 
often these very successful people, if you listen to their uh, videos, they do have some wisdom. They're very practical. Okay. And, um, you know, Warren Buffett was talking about price versus value in his industry of the stock market and general investing yeah. in the 60s. And he said he was always looking for situations where something that he believed had value had a price that the market uh, put too low in his opinion. And the key there is that you have to be able to assess a situation, a token or a company and see what is the value. Uh, and then look at the price. And even Warren Buffett mentioned that he often wouldn't look at the price okay. before he studied about a company. He would review the company and see what its prospects were, what kind of product, how much, uh, um, how much of a moat or competitive difference it had from the rest of the market. And if he felt that that company had a great value and a great potential, he would place yeah in his mind, what should be the price, then he would look at the price. And if the price was too high, he wouldn't buy. Mm -hmm. And if the price was low, he would buy. And I think that this, uh, this also talks about knowledge. Uh, this is why we're focused on trying to help people learn how to think about things exactly. and not tell them what's happening. Let them learn how to think about it on fundamentals. Co tokens are very hard on fundamental to understand. But here we have a case where the price of Bitcoin is Bitcoin less valuable because it was 62,000 and now it's 33. I'll give one analogy for um, where we live in Cyprus. There is a, a, a beautiful beach area called uh, Ayanapa. Mm -hmm. And probably 30 years ago, 32 years ago, um, it had almost, uh, you could buy houses out there. There was, you know, it wasn't developed yet as a beach uh, destination. And now it's expensive because it's one of the top destinations for Europeans, young people as well, uh, yeah. to come there and millions of people visit there. But 30 years ago, it was just a, a yeah. rural uh, area with a nice beach. So if today, for no reason, the price of housing in Ayanapa dropped mm -hmm. because Elon Musk <laughs> did some stupidity, <clears throat> people would swoop in and buy because they know the value yeah. of those houses. There's an airport nearby. There's beautiful beaches. Mm -hmm. There's thousands of restaurants. There's a brand name. There's a big, uh, uh, big connections to airlines. There's yeah. a lot of infrastructure. So the value is still there. So when the price goes down arbitrarily, <clears throat> people should look at it as a buy. On the other hand, if the price is up, doesn't mean it's yeah. getting more valuable. Maybe it's getting overhyped. Maybe it's uh, incorrectly uh, bubbled up. Yeah. yeah. So you have to always look at the fundamentals, and uh, we'll we'll get to the fundamentals at the end today. Yeah, and that's a, a, a common mistake too early. Uh, like we see, we saw last year or mostly this year uh, with early uh, new investors in crypto, new users, they seem to forget and not understand market cap. And what is market cap? What is value? And exactly what is price? And they look like an expensive token like Bitcoin, for example, yeah. but they don't see their market cap. Yeah, this is maybe the ultimate beginner mistake. And because we have beginners, let's talk about it, Andreas. Yeah. Let's tell them what is market cap because some people just look at a token and go, um, yeah. Bitcoin's 33,000, that's expensive. And uh, Cardano's only $1.32. But what they're not taking into account is how much supply those tokens yeah. have. Bitcoin has a fixed supply of 21 million, of which 18,783,000 yeah. are uh, in circulation. And there can only be a couple million more, and that's the end. So there's a small supply. So mm -hmm. the price per token is higher. The market cap is the price of the token times the circulating supply. Yeah. And uh, so you, you, you can't just look at price. You have to look at market cap. And that's why, you know, it's good it's aptly named site <laughs> instead of coinprice.com. It's called coin market cap. And it's good to look at the aggregate market cap across the industry because it gives you a sense of, of yeah. um, how much um, <clears throat> value people are putting into that and they're uh, that are by buying. Yeah. Like they're, they're creating the value there. Yeah. So, um, 
that's that's your beginner's tip of the yeah. day for I, everybody. I saw a very good uh, point from a comment. Uh, I think it was Lucas, uh, the name of the user that uh, commented. We might see the flip pending, and that's why the flip pending is Ethereum flipping Bitcoin. But we, we have to point it out that it now is less than point. Uh, it's less than three times the value of Bitcoin. The market well, cap. That's it, that's it, huge, it, right? It it's another. I I I'm gonna go with another Warren Buffett quote. <laughs> And uh, Warren Buffett, you know, in the up market, everybody goes crazy. But in the down market, yeah. you really see the truth a bit clear about which, how much strength things really have, mm -hmm. how much people really trust them. And uh, I think Warren Buffett said, you don't know who's swimming without their bathing suit until the water, until the tide goes <laughs> out, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's when you find out. And, yeah. uh, and here, you know. Um, you can see, um, you know, Bitcoin uh, is the preeminent yeah. asset um, in the industry. We should all be rooting for it yeah. because it's um, it's a very important asset, and it's the one that's getting adoption by yeah. countries and institutions. We need Bitcoin to succeed. We yeah. want Bitcoin to succeed. If there was only Bitcoin, I think that it would be very boring industry, and it wouldn't create the uh, the wealth, but we do need Bitcoin to succeed. We want it to succeed, but we want a lot of other tokens in there as well because it's otherwise we'd all be fighting over Bitcoin and the earlier people would be the rich ones and the whole rest of the world would be like a feudal yeah. plantation where we all beg the guys who got in early to give us a few scraps. We need new projects yeah. like what we're doing. We need to create uh, economics uh, economic value in other areas so that it doesn't concentrate all into this just one hands, yeah. right? And, but uh, I totally understand where the Bitcoin folks are coming from, yeah. Max Kaiser and the maximalists. Go ahead, maximalists. Good for you yeah. guys. We love you guys. But we do see it differently. But um, yeah. Yeah. We But we have one common goal, uh, decentralized economy. Yeah. That's money, one. money. Yeah. For me, it's uh, yeah, separation of the state and money, sep money through the people. Yeah. And uh, hey, we got yeah. a birthday uh, for Hakan. We'll, you know, I was waiting. We would bring him on, but his yeah. connection's always so bad. <laughs> We're gonna have to upgrade him to a. Uh, let's wish a happy birthday, happy birthday. to Hakan. Yeah, yeah, forty today. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, uh, if you have any kids, uh, happy Father's Day as well. Uh, yeah, if you have a good connection, just write your username. We're gonna bring you in to wish you a happy birthday, so everyone can see or wish you a happy birthday. Well, let's uh, let's start yeah. off with the uh, routine, and then we're gonna invite a couple of people on. So make sure um, uh, everybody who wants to t comment on this next topic, we're gonna uh, we'll write their username. I might send you the link. Yeah. If I see your username, uh, only send your link if you have a very good connection uh, to the internet. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, continue. Okay. Let's let's go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday, Hakan! Again, from everyone. Let's point out some comments. So they we show the love of the community. Yeah. Uh, everyone is wishing happy birthday, Father. Happy Father's Day to everyone. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. A good news we're gonna start is the Bitcoin adoption again. Uh, I think that's only for Texas. Uh, a third location in Texas, Bitcoin ATMs would be installed uh, at a supermarket chain, HEB, which is huge because we see an, yeah. uh, a daily uh, adoption. Like you use ATMs daily. Maybe you, you will not, in uh, 10 years, for example, maybe we will not use uh, ATMs for cash because everything will be digital. Already is with visas and uh, crypto. Well, can you imagine better marketing? Uh, okay, you know, we've got our black cabs coming in. Okay, maybe the only better marketing than this having an ATM in a supermarket is having a cab driver <laughs> telling you about TFC. But they've got, you know, inside the supermarket, 30 supermarkets with Bitcoin ATMs. This is mm. huge. And, um, you know, this, these are, these things are, are happening and, and they don't move the price, but they're creating trends in the network. Yeah. Can you imagine in three years? this chain of 30 uh, locations and it, they're they're kind of creating a basis for the spread of bitcoin usage all through texas mm -hmm. which uh and 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 it's amazing yeah yeah so it's, we, it's truly amazing uh we see the adoption uh of of governments of massive uh, businesses 
Yeah, USA. Uh, this is big. Soon Bitcoin ATM. Yeah, that's yeah, already, Texas yeah. is going for it. Yep. Yeah. That's it. So that's a piece of good news. Yeah. We continue so. back to the giant news. <laughs> El Salvador. We got to keep talking about El Salvador because yeah. what I told everybody is that El Salvador was big, historic, beyond belief thing. Uh, they're going to be under a lot of pressure. It, it isn't something that um, I feel is going to instantly move the market. Uh, I feel like this is is potentially, um, if it's historic in the sense that if other countries start following yeah. behind this and this becomes a trend and you end up with mm. 50 countries that do this, it changed the whole world. Uh, so it's just one country, they're under pressure, and uh, it's it's a very big deal. And the impact will show in three years in the price yeah. of Bitcoin. It won't show today. And it, w it remains to be seen. And you can imagine uh, the, the courage that th this guy had to do it. I'm sure they're going to paint him, yeah. uh, you know, soon in every negative light because this is uh, is an amazing um, historic milestone. We talked about it last week again, but it, it can't get enough press. Uh, and uh, we're really rooting for them. We don't want to bet all our marbles on this because, you know, they could fade out. They could pressure this guy, twist his arm. Yeah. Uh, he and could get him kicked out and get a new president in there who reverses it. So, you know, it's not... Uh, it's just a chance. It's a it's a milestone. Yeah, and uh, I believe they said that they have a hundred days to actually uh, put it in place, and everything will yeah. after a hundred days. People it will be officially, literally, launched. what he's done is that yeah. if you're a merchant there, you have to accept Bitcoin in that country. I mean, <laughs> it's not optional. <laughs> if somebody says, "I want to buy," yeah. even Tesla, this yeah, is the yeah, yeah. even Tesla. If they want to sell a if they want to sell a car in El Salvador yeah. and someone goes to pay with Bitcoin, they have to accept it <laughs> under law. <laughs> it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, this is a beautiful photo of him. I point out that I, th I believe it's a peace sign, and like you said, they're gonna try and uh, paint him as a bad guy. But yeah, they're gonna to turn it around. This, uh, if you sort that's uh, from a younger brother one of the younger brothers of the president of el salvador who said if you sort out the problem of money you can sort out the problems of the world which is an amazing statement yeah but this is true yes of course and, and and when you start hearing in the press all kinds of bs about how bad is this guy see the the, the see these words that they're saying and, you know, these are the words I've been saying as well, that the biggest problem we have in the world is the distribution of money, not the distribution of wealth. Wealth is always going to be unequally distributed. Uh, but if you allow money to come into existence through the people, they can use that money to acquire a piece of wealth. And then the economy can circulate in a, in a, in a different way so that it's neither, you're not trying to rob the rich or, um, you know, you can allow people to make money and provide good business, build big, good businesses, but you can still be part of the money system that you are the fabric of how yeah. it comes into existence. So you will always have minimum needs met. And um, there's no reason why that can't be, you know, when they always talk about, well, you can't give money to the people. Well, why should you give it to the banks? You either give it to the banks or you give it to the people. Yeah. What would be this? It's not difficult. This is really very simple. You you can give it to the people. Yeah. And and that's what we've been advocating, and that's what our model advocates. So for the next hundred days, the El Salvador government, uh, with the businesses, they they need to develop a, a I'm going to say it, a register app for their businesses. A yeah. Way to accept Bitcoin. Well, you which know, is unbelievable. Look. It, let's. I we're, we didn't. I, I want to interject here. Yeah. Uh, look, everybody in Cyprus. Uh, maybe go to that. Did we see the photo of the guy with the Bitcoin thing already on the front? No. We're there we go. Putting it out now. Okay. This is what we started to do in Cyprus. Now I know most Cyprus is enjoying the beach today, but I, I'm a little disappointed that Cyprus has been sleepy through what we've been doing here. We we were two years ahead of Bitcoin here, and. Uh, when this guy's accepting Bitcoin, um, I know that they may have different pay apps and different yeah. uh, simplified structures, but we have a really good low cost pay structure, an app, a register app. We did this two years ago, or a year, no, year and a half, two yeah, years yeah. ago. 
close to well, close to two years close to two years ago we were ahead of this okay and um you know i have a feeling we're going to go to launch in el salvador as well mm. we're going to go right behind this because we have a lot of competitive advantage although i'm very happy this is happening yeah. here's but, a cool comment like yeah. you're saying now hello from limasol black sugar one of the businesses early businesses that are accepting the tfc yeah that's like it. let's see you know Adoption, i mean yeah. we're ahead and uh, yeah so so jump back over to the the other one um yeah so he's moving ahead and, and of course he's going to get pushed back so mm. jump ahead to show yeah it's already starting of course you know um the world bank rejects El Salvador request for help on Bitcoin implementation. Yeah. yeah, now there's a long and tortured history. I don't want to go into the whole history yeah. lesson behind El Salvador, but let me just give you guys uh, uh, to our users and hopefully uh, this could be heard in the future by a lot of people. Um, let's talk about the history of El Salvador. You know, this is a country that was uh, very poor and um, even 100 years ago, its main crop was uh, coffee and 2% of the people made a lot of money from coffee and everybody else was left behind. So you had this huge, you had an upper class and then you had a peasant class. Yeah. And anytime you have that, you're going to have, you're going to have, when you've got that kind of inequality, you're going to have huge problems and they had huge problems and it ping pong back and forth. And ultimately it uh, led to uh, a very big civil war in the 1980s. It lasted 10 years and the U S um, uh, backed the authoritarian government against the people and they funded them with five billion dollars and there was it's a horrible uh, history if you read about it so this country was completely torn up you know just from the simple point of the wealth inequality and they tried to you know all the people in uh in south america central america have tried the different experiments to solve it with wealth redistribution and it didn't work if you just scared out all the rich people and stole their land actually you didn't increase the amount of wealth yeah. in the country you decreased it so everybody became more poor you need your wealthy people you need your movers and shakers you need them to do what they do you need a money system solution and so what's happening in el salvador when this guy's saying that the money changing the uh, money system yeah is a new experiment instead of the political system instead of over you know it's a capitalist overthrow with the, the military or it's a communist overthrow from the peasants. Neither of those have worked to create more wealth and inequality. Exactly, they yeah. both failed. But what's happening now is monetary experiments having democratic money. So uh, for those of you who are into history, be aware this is huge why we're so interested in it. And of course, they're going to get huge pushback because, you know, the uh, was this the IMF? Uh, was uh, no World Bank. The World Bank wants to lend them money and make them slaves. So they don't have, they can tell them what to do. If you can you imagine the power of the World Bank to go into these countries who are desperate for money and say, hey, we're gonna give you the money, but you're gonna do A, B, C, D, E. They might as well <clears throat> own the country because yeah. that's what they do. They own them. They make debt slaves out of them. And Andreas, they do do some good things. The World Bank does do some good things. They do help with infrastructure. But overall, I'm not a fan. Mm. It's a control system. And uh, here we have, uh, of course, they're really upset that this is happening because yeah. they're losing power potentially. So let's uh, let's bump uh, to our video, I think. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Let's go to our guy. <laughs> keep, keep, keep on cooking because I want to get through this. <clears throat> so... Here, here's the here's the idiot of the week. Yeah, and you know I don't mean it in a. I mean obviously this guy is, is you know maybe because I want to have him on, but I'm still gonna I'm gonna say I, I named you the idiot of the week, and here's why. And you know because he's not a dumb person, but he's an idiot on this. He's an idiot because he's talking shit, and he doesn't know what he's saying. Or so economist Steve Hankey says El Salvador's move will only help criminal elements thrive when the U.S. supported the government that murdered 100,000 people, poor citizens of their own country, $5 billion of U.S. money supported a government that murdered 100,000 yeah. people so they could have control in that country. And this guy has the nerve to say that this will only help criminal elements thrive. I don't want to do, one day you could uh, do, we could do an episode on, 
<clears throat> you know, money laundering in the big yeah. banks and how the drug money ends up in New York and 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 uh, the British banks from. So, but it's not our topic, right? Yeah. So we're not going to go into it. But this is incredibly hypocritical and ignorant. Maybe we're going to have this guy is is a, is a genius in his things. He's a commodity trader. He's an economist. He's a he's an expert at inflation and how he can be so ignorant. Yeah. On a topic, either he's compromised or he's ignorant on this topic. And uh, so he he's the idiot of the week. Yeah, but in a way, if Everyone just thinks think about what happened. The last 13 years, uh, we had a, a new economic system, a new coin, Bitcoin, uh, a new money system uh, based on computers. You know it better how it works. And in 13 years, uh, a country accepts it as a legal tender. Incredible. That's amazing. It's That's a, a story that in 300 years they will teach and play the video yeah here's the response of el salvador <laughs> to the world bank to the powers that be uh on the pressure that they're getting <laughs> Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, it's a historic move. Uh, it's a historic, uh, an amazing month. Has it been a month? No, I think three weeks now. Uh, we we hear the news about El Salvador. So let's see. Uh, we're gonna right. put out the first part of the code. I'm gonna try to bring somebody on as well while we're talking about it. I'm gonna send somebody the the link. Yeah, you can uh, continue on that part while you're doing it. Okay, so here's the first part of the code, guys. Uh, write it down. Uh, it's going to be three parts. Whoever, for everyone who doesn't know how it works, we give out a bonus code where you're going to enter a bonus uh, room uh, in three different parts. This is the first part. Every 20 minutes, we do a, a one part uh, until the end of the show. Don't forget to, to subscribe to our channel, like the video, and share it for sure. You make it sound like we're finished. We're just warming up. Yeah, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just I just sent you... Uh, to... Jesse, Vivian, I sent you the okay. StreamYard link. Uh, I'll give you like 30 seconds to see if you're able to respond and join us in there. And um, if not, um, we'll send somebody else a, a link. Uh, no pressure for anybody who joins. You don't have to even have anything intelligent to say your opinion is important. Your perspective is important because it represents what a normal person sees. You're the power. Yeah. So your perspective matters because you are the power. You're the you're the chooser. You get to choose in the economic ecosystems which ones win. So it doesn't matter how, how educated your opinion is. It just matters that yeah. you're the power. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So um, maybe I'll send out um, also one more code. Who else wants to join us now? Maybe, Some, who yeah. has a good connection, please? Yeah. Somebody send me another uh, code. I I'll think we can on. try for Nemera. Uh, okay. Um, the username is Nemera. Like okay, I'll, here. I'll, I'll, send it out, a, yeah. I'll send it out now. All right, what sending the code out to Namara right now, and uh, we'll see who. Uh, yeah, the first part in, of the in, code. I send it in the um, private chat in uh, the football app, mm. uh, so that otherwise everybody would click on it. Um, Ryan's out for the yeah. day. Ryan will definitely have him on the show, but we'll have him on to uh, join us for a whole show. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, remind me to we do that soon. Uh, yeah, thank you so lot from the from the users in Turkey. I think we just hit four thousand users in oh, Turkey, wow, yeah. and um, we're going to make a move there soon. Uh, uh, I got to focus a little bit of attention there. Uh, we we should have a million users in Turkey. Turkey is going to be a massive market for us, and um, and Nigeria is exploding as well. Uh, and uh, we just opened up a chat room for El Salvador, TFC El oh, Salvador. Wow, yeah. We have nine people. Plus me, ten, and you watch. We're gonna work that because you know we're gonna get. We're gonna make a move in El Salvador, everybody. 
we're going to come out of nowhere. Everybody knows, you know, our tools. Hey, hello from Russia. Uh, we have 2,100 people in Russia. I'm so happy to yeah. see it happening. And, uh, you know, thank you very much to our, our users in Russia and our, have some good administrators in there doing, our, doing translation. Thank you very much for that. Um, and TFC Bulgaria, I think we have a room mm. uh, uh, for TFC Bulgaria. I'll, I'll maybe run a code to uh, remind me his username. Save that as a screenshot down a little bit. Georgie uh, uh, Radkoff. Uh, I'll find. Uh, yeah. uh, I'll get you in the uh, Bulgaria chat room as well. All right. So nobody, uh, yeah, nobody, nobody joined us yet. Um, I don't know if we should. I don't want to post it in there. Too many people. Yeah. So we, uh, speaking of new rooms, though, we have two new rooms I saw in the app: the transfer talk and the breaking news. Yeah, which is uh, for for all the football fans. Is it, I think everyone is already joined, right? Automatically. They're joined automatically. Yeah, okay. yeah, they can leave if they want, if they're not into football. But I, those rooms are going to be a blast. Uh, we already see a lot of different people talking there uh, because there's a topic. And uh, those those rooms are going to be red hot. All right. Um, oh, there's, uh, yeah, uh, there's... Give me this uh, EH. Yeah, give me that one. <laughs> I'll send one more. One more uh, try. One more try to dial somebody in here. The next topic is so cool, guys. Uh, I think. Yeah, you can do it while we're start into it while I'm doing this here. <laughs> okay, so here's another cool uh, good news: 157 billion asset manager will probably enter crypto uh, cryptocurrency market. We don't know about which cryptocurrency specific is going to join the whole market. Uh, I don't know if it's a rumor or is it already confirmed. But if that happens, it's going to uh, drive the market a lot to an upwards position. Yeah, it's it's another signal that isn't going to, it might not help in the next month. Mm. But these things, we take notice of them. I think that, I think they did set us back nine months, Andreas, with with this, um, you know, wipeout uh, going from 2.6 yeah. to 1.5. I think they bought themselves nine months. For us to regain momentum could happen faster um uh, but we're gonna get there you can see the signs uh we're gonna always point out the signs for you yeah because uh, we we still are incredibly bullish on the overall uh industry yeah and to all the new uh crypto owners they have to with this uh, whole dump they they learn to know and they, they learn to know the the meaning of the word holo <laughs> you uh, need to hodl and you need to stay with it if you if well, you want the let's financial show, freedom. Let's show yeah. an example of not hodling, uh, <laughs> which is Titan. And this is an advanced topic for uh, for any of you guys who are crypto savvy out there. We're going to talk about a train wreck story that happened in the market two days ago. And oh, um, before we, we, we go on, let's see if we can get an Uh We're going to give it two seconds. If the connection is yeah, clear. if he pops, if the connection pops yeah. live, you can bring him in. Okay, so so uh, we Titan start. Titan falls nearly a hundred percent in latest Polygon uh, DeFi exploit. Here's a chart. Yeah, just leave that chart up there for yeah. a second, and everybody absorb that. Uh, this is pretty bad. <laughs> From sixty dollars to zero, it's yeah. Titan, and uh, this is more for uh, you crypto savvy folks out there. What's going on? We'll give you our opinion about it. Um, you know, there's a lot of rumors. Was this intentionally, um, was this done from an exploit? Was this Mark Cuban rugging this thing? Was that this, uh, 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 we have Jay on here uh, on the right. He's okay. got a good connection. We'll yeah. add him in there. And, you know, what happened? That thing went from $60 to zero in a few hours, right? And uh, this was... Um, this was big news, and they're going to use it to create kind of fear and go, look, we need regulation. Look, we need, um, you know, you should see how dangerous this cryptocurrency. Um, we want to strongly suggest, you know, uh, don't listen to that. You know, um, this isn't, this was bad, but yeah. it wasn't the worst thing that happened in crypto. Uh, and this part of the experimentation there, people are playing around with these new DeFi protocols. And this yeah. is a bit complicated because what they did was, uh, Titan uh, created a, um, a stable coin where it was 75% backed with USDC, the yeah. US dollar coin, and 25% backed with Titan, and uh, they're run by an algorithm. 
And what happened was the algorithm ran hot and every, it pumped up really, really big, really, yeah. really fast. And what, what can go up really, really fast, that algorithm, it's almost like a car engine tuned too yeah. fast when you hit the, the gas too much punch because the engine was tuned wrong and, and from what it looks, the algorithm was tuned too hot. So it pumped up big and then they hit the brakes. The brakes were tuned <laughs> the reverse, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's like as soon as you hit the brakes, the brakes went too fast and then the panic started yeah. and even Mark Cuban sold out, pulled his liquidity mm -hmm. and the thing went to zero. And, um, you know, people are upset about that and they're saying, oh, we need regulation, this and that. Okay. Um, you know, um, not it's it is very risky to play in those DeFi um, finance experiments. Yeah, you know, I'm not. A, I'm, I would tell everybody stay away from those, but uh, I don't. I don't think it, it necessitates uh, regulation. Uh, people are going to learn their lessons by not playing with rockets that like that are headed yeah, up yeah. and down so quickly. Um, so Titan was a big disaster story. We're just writing it off to a bad tuning on an algorithm. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was an experiment. I think it was a, a legit experiment. It was interesting. It was a new idea. Yeah, It was an idea they're playing with. And it was a, people lost money on that one. Next. I mean, this is crypto. You yeah. Know, if you're going to play in things like Titan and Iron and, and complex DeFi, You've got to know what you're doing, and you've got to be prepared that you could ride up. It's a it's a bit of it's a bit of a gamble, you know. And and all all things are created from gamble. Yeah. Even everything takes a risk to create it. You know, when people went from Europe into the United States, they took big risks. Yeah. Uh, when all kinds of different things around the world, there's risk created. Whenever you're changing something, whenever you're doing something new. You're taking risk and you're hoping for a reward and people it's innate to us so certain people will yeah will will do it and on, on this topic comes one of the uh, somebody somebody comment up there is a, a cuban rug pull um <laughs> mark cuban i'm not uh i think he might i don't think he needed that to do a rug pull there but certainly <clears throat> certainly he left everybody holding the bag and certainly he was the one that put his name behind an untested algorithm and uh and he got out and mm -hmm. saved his money i uh, he's annoying okay uh, he's very annoying but i'm still grateful that he's involved yeah. in the industry and i'm grateful for he's got his own wisdom as well and i think he's a net asset to the industry with his publicity and his support for the industry. So we're grateful to that. Yeah. We know he's going to get a lot of heat and a lot of it is very, very deserved. And I'm going to point out for all you conspiracy folks, um, some really weird vibes about this whole Titan thing. Uh, we lost all our potential. What happened to our folks? We had three folks in there and they, they came and went. Anybody wants to join in there now, give us yeah. a, a username. We had a few people that, uh, popped in, but they uh, disappeared. Here's before. one username here, and uh, just before we wait for uh, for him AAJ to join Junior. in, or the other guys that try to join in, just try again now. Let me try to get a junior in there. Yeah, but uh, on this topic of Titan comes uh, one of the first advices that we gave in our first episode: you invest in projects yeah that you understand. That was one of the th uh, advices that we said. Uh, in the early episode, like one or two, we said that you need to understand the project in order to put your money in it. There's no AA Junior username. Oh. Make sure you type your username correct, folks. But you're right. You 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 should understand what you're. You should be able to see some value. Oh, here is one. C. Dot. Xen. Okay. We'll give Let's a try. try. Yeah, you need to understand the project because before you you rush in and put your money wh whatever your money is like even one dollar totally don't play with these uh these uh high risk things uh hold pick products that you can use that you see the value of that you want to support with your human energy your time your money something that you believe yeah. in that if it doesn't go well you're willing to lose your time and your money because you believe in it that much and because you understand the value point. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's it. All right, see Sam, we sent him uh, the link yeah. in the football app, and hopefully he'll pop in so we get to hear what our, a few of our, our users uh, think. I'm going to send one more guy. Yeah, and here. let's put out the second part of the code. Here's the second part of the code uh, on our 40 minute mark. Uh, let's see. Did you find another one? Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. We'll get somebody. We'll get somebody in here. Well, while we're waiting for them, we're gonna we're gonna talk conspiracies mm. here. <laughs> we're gonna talk conspiracies now. I'm a <laughs> I'm a history history major as well as I studied history and philosophy before I went to law school, and I got a doctor's degree in law, and I'm a self taught computer programmer, <clears throat> and I was involved in computer businesses since I was 13 years old and all different kinds of businesses since I was young. And I started my first computer company when I was uh, 25, and it was quite a big success. So I've had a lot of background, but I'm still a historian uh, at heart there. And uh, put up there the Titanic. Um, when I saw the Titan thing, um, this is what it came to mind. This, this reminded me of, of, of a story. There was a book written 18, 14 years before the Titanic sank. Yeah. There was a book called The Wreck of the Titanic <clears throat> or Futility. And the it was about a boat called the Titan yeah. that was doing a crossing. Uh, we got OP vibes. You can pull them in while I'm telling my conspiracy story. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, and uh, put them on mute until the, yeah. we get in there. The Wreck of the Titan. And... Um, so 14 years before the Titanic sank, and the Titanic is very symbolic because it was owned by J.P. Morgan's White Star Cruise Line. And on, on the Titanic were all the competitors who did not want the Federal Reserve, the crap system that yeah. we're under now, were on the Titanic. And so actually, to me, this is surreal because with the Titanic sank all the competitors that were we, that were able to stop the Federal Reserve Bank from being formed in the U.S. in 1913. The Titanic sank in 1912. And yeah. that brought in this era that we're under, this horrible uh, central bank system. And now we have the Titan token <laughs> crashing. And it just made me yeah. uh, make me laugh to say uh, Illuminati confirmed. All right, let's bring in, uh, <laughs> let's bring in OP vibes here, man. Okay. How you doing, brother? Uh, let's see that connection. Okay, can you hear us now? Hi there. Okay. Yeah, I can hear Welcome you. Can hear you. Welcome to the crypto chat. Where Where are you calling from? Which city? Nigeria. Are you in? Which city? Lagos. All right. Lagos. Lagos. Wonderful, man. Glad I know. I've seen well, your username many, many times. It's nice to see your face. I've. Uh, well, I think it's, I've nice. it's nice to see you back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, like, do you have any rain thoughts? over here? So I, I, I was surprised the network was gonna go through. Like it's been raining yeah. since morning. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what's um? Do yes, you have any that, thoughts about 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 anything we've talked about on uh, the crypto chat today? Uh, not really, but I, I do have a question. Do like um, I saw one um, post. I can't remember the site on um. The Chinese government pulling out um, electricity from miners um, in China, something like that. And potentially, I think that would affect those that are mining um, Bitcoin or so. So I, I, didn't, I don't actually know how true that is. I don't know if you've heard anything pertaining to that. I was like, I was going to ask you on crypto chat today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we've got um, maybe Andreas can find the, the, the hash rate chart okay. um, while I'm talking. It's a, it's real. China, we joked about China banned Bitcoin for the fifth time, but this is true. Yeah. They did clamp down on the miners, and yeah. it did affect the markets. And they're yeah. also going steps further. And they are, they, the reason, one of the reasons Bitcoin is down is because of the clampdown in China, and the miners, <clears throat> yeah, put it up there, Andreas. He's going to show you the the Bitcoin hash rate. You can see there, um, once China um, clamped down on Bitcoin mining, you can see the huge drop-off. That's the total wow. compute power supporting the Bitcoin network. Now, that has two effects. <clears throat> One, it makes uh, – it has there's less processing power in the network, but it also yeah, means there's – Bitcoin 
being earned by the miners to be sold. And Bitcoin has enough processing power, even without the Chinese earning the Bitcoin through that, um, those mo big mines they had up in, in certain cities. So I think the mining is not as big of a deal. The bigger problem okay. on the price of crypto is that China is did really clamp down and make it more difficult for uh, people to buy and sell crypto. So you made a very good point, and it's probably the most, it's, it's one of a few reasons, but it's probably the biggest reason why the Bitcoin price is down right now. Okay. Yeah. So that's, well, um, Steve, also, um, is there any update on the NFTs? Yeah. On the, uh, yeah, we've, we finally, you can see we got the bamboo into the yeah. app. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. we created yeah. the Panda wallets in because we needed to have bamboo and Panda connected to the app before we release the NFTs. So this week, the developers okay. are working on NFTs all week. And we already had done some work on it, but we're coming back to it. And I think before the okay. July 11th final of the Euros, we will have our first uh, NFT okay. collection live and selling in the TFA app, as well as you will be able to mint your first NFTs as well using your bamboo. Yeah. And and we've even got a kind of an auction system oh, to have some of these as well. So we're, we're very close. Um, giving the safe date of bamboo. July 11th of the Euro final is our target date to be live. We might be live ahead of that, but we'll certainly be live okay. by the July. 11th and then uh we're excited about it as i can see you are and yeah. uh it, it's going to yeah, be a lot very, of fun. very much <laughs> yeah, yeah we have no some problem. pretty good stuff in there and uh and our, no our artistic people in yeah. the community can can make some money there as well the artists need to prepare now for huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah well look uh thanks yeah. so much we're going to jump yeah. to the next Thank segment you. great to meet you sort of in person thanks. yeah and, uh, thanks for being part of the community we'll yeah. see you in the app <laughs> bye steve all right, yeah. cheers, bye. Oh yeah, that was great. So the artists uh, of the TFA community need to prepare on their artwork about the NFTs. Yeah, and we're gonna, <laughs> Andreas, we're gonna partner good artists with athletes because they don't know how to build a good NFT for themselves. Yeah. So we're gonna find artists in our community and we're gonna suggest to certain athletes to say, hey, look, we'll match you up with an artist who can create you an NFT or maybe three or four different, uh, you can yeah. bring oh, yeah. Jay in there as well. Uh, we can match them up so we can help support our artists. All hey right. There, can you hear us? How are you doing? Yeah, I can, I can hear you. I can hear you. How are you doing today? I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you doing? We're good. And where are you calling from? Which city and which country? Well, I'm calling from Nigeria, Benin. Benin. Okay, All that's right. wonderful. Uh, yeah. We, we want to hear your opinion or if you have any questions uh, on our topics today, uh, what we did discuss so far. Okay. More like I just want to really commend you guys on the work you've been doing. And I really want to say that you guys are really doing a very good job. And I pray that this project really turns out to be what it's like. Like it turns out to attain its potential. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, okay, thanks. I have a, I have I have a question, one question real quick. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to ask um like is is there any update concerning the external um TFC wallet? Yeah. We obviously we already have the ability to um the, oh you mean the the ex, the wallet itself that yeah. we're building. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the wallet. <laughs> yeah, um so we we had a as I mentioned, we had um, we were starting on that three weeks ago. We had actually finished the interface. As you saw, we put up some of that. And then we had to uh, connect into the Binance Smart Chain, and we, we lost three weeks. And now this week, we're starting back on the NFTs and on the wallet development. And uh, I wish we we're, – we're hoping – I don't know how long it will take. Um, the NFTs by July 11th, and uh, the, the wallet, we might have something done – in July, or it could be like 50, 60 days. It depends. Mm. We won't know till we're about halfway in it. But it, I will tell you this, it's going to be the hottest wallet out there because it's got built-in games, built-in spending system, 
and it, it's connected to uh, three blockchains. You know? So actually, Superstar Wallet. And uh, you might also be asking about the external transfers where people are, you know, w at what point in time can users actually start sending TFC outside? And that yeah. kind of goes to your point about fulfillment of the project because, you know, we're doing really, really well and the project's picking up momentum. And we need to get on a bigger exchange like Bitfinex, Binance, eToro, one of the real big ones. So there's a huge amount of liquidity, buying, and publicity. Once there's these bigger buying pools that know about our projects, when they see us, they're going to be very impressed because we're not well known for how much we have accomplished. We're like kind of like a superstar player that's playing in a league kind of that not many people are watching. But when we actually get discovered by the bigger markets, they're not going to believe how cool this is, how real our community is, how real our technology is. And I feel good things. No one knows. I'm yeah. not representing. But I feel that we certainly compare I, better than at least half the top projects in the top 30. I, I can't see them comparing with our potential and with, even with our current accomplishments. So I think you have to watch for us listing on like an eToro, uh, Binance and Bitfinex. And, and I, I feel that it's just a matter of time with our community keeping growing. Because then once the volumes are big, they could easily absorb anybody who wants to sell their TFC, which God knows why somebody would want to sell their TFC in these early days, yeah. you know? But uh, that's my best answer for you. Uh, so we uh, lost them yeah. there. You can you can uh, <laughs> remove them. But thanks uh, for Thank joining so us yeah. and for uh, those good questions. So um, speaking of external TFC rewards, uh, I want to point out, like, we're, we're towards to the end. But I want to point out the prediction system within our TFA application, which it was there from the beginning. Uh, a lot of competitors are trying to do it now. But we have a Euro 2020 or 2021, I don't know how they call it, uh, predictions, a giveaway or a competition. Is it competition? What well, can you tell us a, a bit? I'm gonna put out the, the headline here. Oh yeah. Uh, a gold <laughs> a golden phone worth uh, 25. Uh, how much is it worth? That's it's worth. 9,000 euros. And the whole price? Uh, <laughs> it's I literally gold, 24-karat <laughs> gold iPhone. And the whole With minimum the, price? Now, that's that's assuming it doesn't yeah. become a collector's item. Okay. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> I think it's it's quite special as, a, as an item. But, yeah, so, <clears throat> you know, uh, predictions has been a key part of our technology. Uh, we, we're going to have a, a prediction of the Euro finals. If you predict the correct match, the exact score, and you're the closest to the, you guess the time of the first goal, not exactly, but if you're the closest to it, you win that. You have to qualify though. Yeah. And in order to qualify, you have to get 20 euros of bamboo. You can do it in the app. And when you have 20 euros of bamboo, you're entered free. You can still spend your bamboo on NFTs and minting and other stuff, but you have to have 20 euros of bamboo to enter in the qualifier which is tonight guys in a few hours so anybody on this call go do it yeah um you go into the you have to be on the latest version of android upgrade on in uh either an iphone you go in the spend section or on android <clears throat> click on bamboo and buy 20 euros of bamboo then go to the prediction section and it says join tournament and you can join the Euro stage three and make the predictions on the next uh, Euro stage games. Top 30% qualify. There's still another way to qualify, but you'd have to have a hundred euros of bamboo, which is not a big deal because you can spend your bamboo yeah. on an NFT and, and minting and uh, other cool stuff. But um, <clears throat> for those of you who might not have a hundred euros, you really need to take advantage of the qualifier because 30% of the people who play are going to qualify yeah. and it's free. You just have to have that bamboo. So go for it. There's a gold phone, there's nine silver coins and there's tickets to take TFC out of the system, yeah. sell it on Bitrix, $25,000 guys of total prizes yeah. between the iPhone, the gold, uh, the, the gold iPhone, the silver coins and the tickets to take uh, TFC out to Bitrix then there's also a TFC prize pool. Yeah. So I think there's only like 156 people so far yeah, yeah, yeah. who are joined. So that means th that 50 people are going to be eating this prize pool that, you know, could 
you know, it's still a good contest, even if there was 50,000 people yeah. in it. So uh, do that part. And um, if you have questions, you can ask in the TFA admin. Yeah. Room. The admin and, is uh, about it. Yeah, for sure. Awesome competition. And yeah. uh, uh, but Panda cannot be used to mint NFTs. Uh, the way it's going to work is that uh, Bamboo is the only way to mint NFTs. You can also buy NFTs with Bamboo or Panda yeah. or TFC. You can buy the NFTs with either Bamboo, Panda, or TFC, but the only way to mint them is Bamboo. And if you're selling a uh, uh, an NFT, you have to accept either payment in Panda or TFC. If somebody pays you in Bamboo, it gets converted to your preference of TFC or Panda. Mm. And um, <clears throat> if you're paid in Panda, you can take it out on and trade it. Uh, if you want to hold more, you can take it in TFC and hold Yeah. Uh, but if you want to cash it out, you can take it in Panda. You can also move your NFTs out of the TFA environment onto the Binance markets uh, that support it. So it's an open environment for the NFT side, guys. Yeah. So uh, those are good questions, and you'll see more on that. But I think that's it. Um, you've got another good show coming up with Jordy, Pete, and yeah. George, I think. Uh, we're still going to give you an hour in the bonus room, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll we'll throw that open for you now with the final part of the code. Did you already do it? No. I'm just waiting. And, uh, and then uh, I'm having a blast with this Euro competition. Yeah. I'm really enjoying watching the places where there's no masks and where everybody is, is full. Yeah. And I think that is really helping psychologically for us to get past this media terror that they put fear in everybody uh, to see. You know, there's really, yeah. uh, it's beautiful to see the energy returning to football with a full stadium. It's just uh, awesome. But I hope everybody else having fun with the euro so get yeah. your bamboo predict the two matches tonight at 7 p.m join the jordy pete show and um we'll see you guys next week yeah don't forget to subscribe to the channel for sure subscribe yeah share like. the video uh to all your friends but do not share the code if your friends are not watching the live stream uh so we're gonna put out the the, la the last part of the code and we're going to give it just two minutes for everyone to complete the code and join in to the bonus room. Was there going to be a question? No. Okay. Because there's only uh, there's only an hour and a half before the Jordan yeah. Pete show. So <clears throat> you'll have a little bit of time in there uh, to earn some Panda points. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> queuing one up right now for you guys. And uh, just before we close, let's put out this cool article from Yahoo Finance. Olympian oh, yeah. Jan Hude gives 100 trillion Panda tokens to the TFA Worldwide Association. That's a really cool read for uh, everyone to go and read it. It's on Yahoo Finance. Uh, yeah, and I, <clears throat> I put out the bat signal for everybody and I explained to them, big things are happening behind the scenes with Panda. Yeah. And uh, you, you don't want to be caught without Bamboo, Panda, and TFC. Uh, they're all fantastic. They're all integrated into our ecosystem. Uh, Bamboo is not a token. You can use it, as we said. Panda's a token on the Binance Smart Chain. It's very cheap. Nobody knows about it. TFC has is, is is, is got the potential of being a, a top 10 token in the world, and, um, and not that many people know about that. So, you know, Skip, uh, skip some sort of luxury item that uh, buying something you don't yeah. need to buy, and split the money in between Panda and TFC, folks. Yeah, and uh, we're gonna see everyone next week or in the next uh, live stream. I hope everyone is gonna enjoy their Father's Day, uh, their Sunday, uh, and have a nice uh, day, have a nice week. Bye bye. Take something new under the sun.